One of these saxophones is a top of the line professional model instrument costing thousands of dollars and the other one I bought off of Amazon for 259 bucks. I'm going to play the same thing in a blind test on both of them and I want you to tell me if you can hear the difference. Jay Metcalf here. In today's video, we're going to do something a little bit different. Before the unboxing, we're going to start off with the blind play test. Not being able to see which instrument I'm playing is going to force you to rely on your ears rather than your eyes. Listen carefully and comment below which one you think is which. I'm playing the exact same mouthpiece and reed setup on both instruments. And by the way, I'm giving one of these away. Details in a little bit. So what do you think? Pretty tough to tell the difference, right? Now, there's no tricks going on here. That audio was recorded back to back on the same track using the same mic in the same room, just on two instruments with very different price tags. Let's listen again, shall we? So which is which? Put your comment below. I honestly might get this wrong myself if I didn't know which order I put the clips in when editing this video. How is this possible? Why would anyone spend thousands of dollars on a professional level saxophone when the cheapest one on Amazon sounds almost identical? I've been playing for you my Yanagisawa professional alto saxophone, which sells for around $4,500 new. And this East Star alto saxophone, which is priced just about as low as you can get on Amazon. I haven't made any adjustments to this instrument. I literally took it out of the packaging and started recording. Let's have another listen. And this time, please vote in the on screen poll so we can get a general consensus on what you guys think. Everyone gets so hung up on which instrument to buy and the unique sound characteristics of the different brands of saxophones and the magical qualities of certain vintage instruments. But the truth is what we're usually doing is blaming our equipment if we don't like the results we're getting out of it. This isn't just for saxophones and musical instruments. You could apply this same concept to lots of things where the skill is more important to the results you get than the gear. Now this E-Star sax is nothing really special. It's very much like all the other Chinese import saxophones. The parts that are used to build it are likely coming from the exact same source as many of the others I've unboxed on this channel. And that's one of the reasons why it's so inexpensive. Let's listen one more time and then I'll tell you some of the ways they've cut corners to be able to sell this instrument at that ridiculously low price. <laughs> First thing, opening up the case, we see that the case itself is as cheap as it gets, offering very little protection to the instrument. A good case costs money, and you should expect a quality case to come with a more expensive saxophone. The next thing I noticed was the pads. The pads they use in this horn are cheap, but they are installed very well, and they have metal domed resonators. All saxophone pads can get sticky, but the cheap ones much more so. On this instrument, you're gonna get a lot of pads stuck closed while playing. There are ways to deal with this, but a more expensive instrument should have higher quality pads that will last longer and not get so sticky. I cannot tell what kind of brass was used to make this saxophone, but I can only assume it was the cheap kind. 
Having said that, I've tried bending it in several spots with my hands and can tell you that it is quite strong and resistant. As much as people talk about the metal a saxophone is made out of having a big impact on the sound, the truth is that the shape of that metal matters far more. This brass has been shaped to the exact same dimensions as a professional instrument. It's probably identical in shape to a summer. The other materials used, like springs, corks, felts, lacquer, and key touches, are pretty standard, and I don't think there's any significant cost savings there. One area that I usually see a lot of cut corners is the assembly. Often with these cheap Chinese imports, you'll see the corks glued on crooked or the wrong thickness of corks, which result in improper key heights and a lot of play in the mechanisms. No joke. This saxophone is the best I've seen in this price range when it comes to the setup of all these things. There is virtually zero mechanical play in the keys. I found a minuscule amount in the low C key and the front F key is a bit wobbly, but since there is no pad attached to that key, its impact is minimal. The neck has a very nice fit into the body and even the octave key on the neck has a tight fit. This is not usually the case with these instruments. The neck cork is also installed quite well, I must say. The mouthpiece it comes with is a plastic copy of a Selmer Sea Star and it works fine. A more expensive saxophone should come with a better quality mouthpiece though. It does come with a handy set of white gloves, which as you know, are absolutely essential for playing the saxophone. And it comes with two swabs, one for the body and one for the neck and mouthpiece. You've also got cork grease, a polishing cloth, a bunch of reeds, and a neck strap. This instrument also comes with a stand, which is a nice accessory to include. So really, apart from the sticky pads and the terrible case, this is a great value at $259. If you're on a tight budget and want to get a saxophone, you can play everything you need to play on this instrument. There are a lot of details that go into why a professional saxophone player like myself would much rather have this professional level instrument than a cheap one from Amazon. If you're serious about playing saxophone and can afford a better instrument, you should get the best you can that fits in your budget. But for a beginner or someone who just wants to play casually or anyone who's on a tight budget, this instrument will get the job done as you heard me demonstrate. Now, every time I do one of these videos, there's always a bunch of comments, people saying, yeah, but that instrument is just gonna fall apart after a short period of time playing it. That's simply not true in this case. Chinese made instruments have a bad reputation because when they first started producing musical instruments decades ago, many of the instruments were so poorly made that they would literally fall apart in your hands. Things have changed drastically since that time. I know this may be difficult for some people to accept, but the reality is there are many high quality products being manufactured in China and they've gotten quite good at making alto saxophones. If you have a bit more to spend, my favorite budget alto saxophone is the Jean-Paul AS400. It comes with a great case as well as excellent customer service. I've put links to both of these in the description below. Now, earlier I told you I'm giving away one of these instruments. No, I'm sorry, it's not the Yonagasawa, but if you would like a chance to win a brand new E-Star, alto saxophone, click the link in the description below. Follow the instructions to enter. It's super easy and free, of course. If you don't want the instrument for yourself, you could always give it away to someone else in case you win. Contest ends December 20th. Now let's listen to the two saxophones again, but this time I'm gonna let you know which one was which. Take this moment while you're listening to click the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already.